Puji, we can't hear you. Yeah, yeah. I think the mic was uh, slightly loose. Yeah, now we should be okay, right? Yeah, now okay. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Om Ajnana Timiran Dasya Jnana Anjana Chala Gaya Chakshurun Miltam Yena Dasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupaha Kadamayam Dadati Supadantikam Nandeham Shri Guruho Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raguna Than with Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Rijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhan Vitamscha Te Krishna Karanas in Dudi Navandu Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namustute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vanishari Shabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Panchakal Patarubhyas Chakrapasandubhya Eva Chapati Tanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namanamaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Vishnupadaya Prishthai with the Lishan Bhutte, Radhanatha Swami Ujina Vani Namaha Om Vishnu Padaya, Vishna Prishthai with the Lishan Bhutte, Vidanta Swami Namini, Namahaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharani, Vishesha, Shunyavadi, Paschatya Desha, Karana. Come Kurti Grim Yat Kurpata Mahamande, Sri Gurum Din Taranam Parman and the Madho, Sri Chaitan Nishwaram. Hari Krishna. So uh, I believe we completed up to verse 10. Is that correct? Yeah, I think yes, we have to continue verse from verse 10. Yes. Okay. Fine. Just want to double check. <clears throat> so we are at a very interesting point in the ninth chapter, ninth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is very, very special. It is the king of knowledge. Bhagavad Gita itself is the crest jewel of all scriptures. Sarvo Panishado Gavo Dogdago Palanandana. If all the Vedas are compared to a cow and Krishna is compared to a cowherd, Dogdago Palanandana, he is milking the cow of the Vedas. Actually, the, the cow is compared to all the Upanishads because Upanishads are the essence of the Vedas. And the essence of the Upanishads is being drawn in form of the milk of the cow. Sarvo Panishado Gavo Dugdha Gopala Nandanaha and Dugdham Gita Amrutam Mahat Partha Vatsa Sudhir Bhokta Dugdham Gita Amrutam Mahat the Dugdha, the milk is this Gita Amrutha, it is the very essence of the Upanishads. So Upanishads are Vedanta, the conclusion of the Vedas and the essence of the Upanishads is the Gita. And the ninth chapter is the topmost secret within the Gita. Raja Vidya Raja Guyam Pavitra Midam. So you can understand how important this knowledge is. And the last verse of the ninth chapter, which is exactly the middle verse in the whole Bhagavad Gita, is the most important of all secrets of all secrets. And we will come to that. Probably not today. Today I do not intend to complete the chapter. But we will come to it. And that is the only verse from the Gita which Krishna repeats. Normally repetition is not considered you know, a sign of eloquence. But Krishna wants to make sure that you don't miss what was the essential teaching. So he puts it right in the middle. And he repeats it to Arjuna at the end by telling Arjuna, Arjuna, I hope you have understood. I will now summarize what I have told you and the, my essential instruction from the Gita. And he repeats that verse. It is one or two words from the verse slightly adjusted. But practically the same verse. We will not discuss the verse today. So if you do not know the verse, we will keep it as a suspense. But suffice to mention to you right now, of course you can always look it up. It is the last verse of the ninth chapter. But the beautiful thing, just so that since I am on this topic, the beautiful thing 
about that verse is exactly what Krishna is telling in that verse is exactly what we as followers of Krishna consciousness are focusing our lives following. So nobody should have any doubt as to as practitioners of Krishna consciousness in this Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya, Sampradaya whether we have got it right or we have not got it right. Because we are exactly following the essence of the essence of the essence of the essence that Krishna says you can forget everything else, just don't forget this. Because this is what will take you across. And following of that verse is ultimate. Is, is the description of a life of surrender. So that's very beautiful. We'll come to that. So just have patience. Krishna is developing the topic in that direction. Because in this ninth chapter, Krishna is giving that highest knowledge. And as we have been discussing, this highest knowledge is about Ananya Bhakti. It is actually, though very simple, so difficult for complicated spiritualists to understand. And why it is so difficult to understand, we discussed this also. It is because of the feeling of envy. That's why Krishna at the beginning of the ninth chapter itself says, Anasuyave, you are not envious of me, Arjuna. That is why I'm explaining this topmost secret to you. And in fact, at the very end of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna insists that this topmost secret, especially knowledge of the ninth chapter, do not describe it to those who are not devotees because not only will they not be able to appreciate it, but they will become offensive towards the Lord. Because that is the nature of envy. If you glorify somebody in front of somebody who doesn't like him, what happens? There is an immediate feeling of dvesha. Dvesh. The Sanskrit word is dvesha. Krishna has used this word, raga, dvesha, vimukta, uge. In many places, dvesha is a very interesting word. Dvesha is an advanced form of envy. The step, one step below ninda, which is the highest form of envy. And Ninda means active criticism. But some people, because they want to show their saintliness, they are a bit, not directly speaking against Krishna, because Krishna is honored and respected by so many as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But they have this dvesha. If somebody says, oh, you must do everything for Krishna, they become very, why should I do for him? I should do for myself. God should facilitate me and my perfection. Why should I be engaged in serving him? So that's a strong feeling of dvesha. And this is also, this is an envy and this is also based on ignorance. Because the living entity influenced by Maya doesn't understand. Natve viduhu swartha gatim hi vishnu durashaya ye bahirar sabhavan. You don't understand that the sweetness of that surrender to Krishna, the sweetness of that we discussed this in great detail in the last class. That the sweetness of living a life of dedication to Krishna is so wonderful. It's such a sweet reciprocation between the Lord and the devotee, wherein the devotee becomes the servant of God. And God, in reciprocation to that Ananya Bhakti, becomes the servant of his devotee. It's a very beautiful relationship. It is not an exploitative relationship of surrender. A master and a slave. It's a very beautiful relationship of love. In fact, the Lord expanded Himself into all these unlimited living entities. Eko ham bhausyam. Make it possible to have that kind of an experience. The Lord wants that experience of love with His part and parcel. Now, that's the whole spiritual reason for our existence. The Lord wants us to be connected Him with him in love and be part of this unlimited opulence that he has manifested. And to be a part of that Leela, keeping him in the center, it is so wonderful. But those who are envious of the Lord are unable to appreciate that point and they find it very difficult to understand the topmost secret knowledge. That's why Krishna says, don't explain to them. Otherwise, they are going to be feeling dvesha. I don't want to surrender to Krishna. Huh? 
and that is why there are some for some philosophers who when they translate and explain the gita rather they explain quite a few things somehow or the other okay but when it comes to ananya bhakti they try to twist the verses so they just cannot tolerate the twist the meaning of the verses because they just can't tolerate surrender even when surrender to me it is written they write explicitly no no this doesn't mean surrender to krishna it means surrender to the self which is inside our heart which is represented as krishna so then they twist in various ways so the secret is encapsulated very beautifully in the in the center of the bhagavad gita it's like the jewel which is kept in this jewel box the lid is the first the, the base is the first six chapters the lid is the last six chapters and the middle six chapters is the jewel and the heart of the jewel is this ninth chapter and 9.34 is the center of the jewel the best of the best so why we are mentioning this because we are focusing as krishna's devotees and because the focus of our spiritual practice is ananya bhakti it is extremely important for us to understand this point so in case you are wondering why prabhu ji is you know going through all this discussion again and again and again why is wasting our time rather than discussing about shlokas please understand krishna wouldn't have said that this is the topmost secret of all secrets just like that even the greatest of scholars even so many learned people fail to understand this now you may say oh prabhu ji you think you are very smart they didn't understand you understood it so my response to that is we have understood it because of the grace of the spiritual master and because somehow at least we are not so envious if not any other qualification yeah? at least we are I'm, not that we don't have any envy but at least not to the point that we will come to dwesha then we can at least appreciate this point at least theoretically so ultimately the appreciation and understanding of the sananya bhakti comes only through the grace of the devotees pure devotees and that is what actually makes us fortunate that is the faith we are talking about we are not simply talking about ordinary faith in scriptures advancement in bhakti especially pure devotion requires faith in ananya bhakti kevala bhakti shuddha bhakti different words to describe the same what we translate in english as pure devotional service pure meaning transcendental not mixed with rajogun samogun satvagun transcendental and such transcendental bhakti krishna already described in various verses and he hinted about it earlier as well but now after the 10th verse of the bhagavad gita where he indicates he gives a summary description of the material manifestation ऐसे ही मैयाध्यक्षेण प्रकृति सूयते स चराचर हेतुना कंपेय जगत विपरीवर्त दोल वर्ल्ड इज रनिंग अंडर माई डिरेक्शन बट आई एम एज एज यू मे सी दट आई एम नॉट डायरेक्टली अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस मैनिफेस्टेशन एंड आई एम नॉट डायरेक्टली इन्वॉल्व थ्रू माई पुरुष अवतारास Mahavishnu, Garvadaksha, Vishnu, Shirodaksha—they are managing the material affairs. I am the director. I am not the manager. From a distance, let it happen. I am facilitating it through Mahavishnu, my expansion. Vishnu or Mahansa, yah, asya kala visheshu Govinda Madhi Prasham Tamahamaya. That Mahavishnu is the expansion of the expansion of the expansion of the expansion of Sri Krishna. and he is managing all this that too not fully directly he expands into garbhodakshay vishnu then he expands into shirodakshay vishnu from whom parmatma comes in everybody's heart so krishna says you know i am not directly but i am facilitating i am not the doer even though in one sense i am the nimitta even though i am the efficient cause and material energy is the 
substantial cause, the upadan karan. But ultimately, I am not the doer because I am not involved. I am just creating this facility because living entities want to enjoy independent of me. So I am creating this facility for them. There is nothing for me to gain. But the problem is, now this Krishna doesn't say explicitly, but I am connecting it to the next section. The problem is, Krishna is hinting it, that because this material world is generally manifested by Mahavishnu, Garbodakshya Vishnu, Shikadakshya Vishnu, whenever the living entities in this world think of God, think about Vishnu Narayan as God. Lord lying on the milk ocean, the He is our God. And that is all okay. But the problem is, because they do not know that even Mahavishnu is the expansion of the expansion of the expansion of me, when I come into this material world, down, descend, avatar, avatar means coming down. When I come down into this material world, once in a day of Brahma, not even in every Dwapar Yuga, once in every 1000 Dwapar Yugas I come. In my personal original form of Krishna, Govinda, of Vrindavan. Many people are unable to appreciate me. They become bewildered. Some of them think, based on my divine qualities, some of them think, who are a little bit more pious, they think, oh, I am an Amsha of this Vishnu. And then, they, and then they call me Avatar of Vishnu. So sometimes they have a misunderstanding that Vishnu is the source and I am a tiny incarnation. And then there are others who are so bewildered in their knowledge that they, instead of understanding my divinity, they just think of me as an ordinary human being. And this is where Krishna starts describing in the 11th verse. He says, Avajananti ma mudha Manushim Tanumashritam Parambhavam Ajananto Mama Bhuta Maheshwaram. That those who are foolish, Avajananti, they disrespect me, they deride me, they do not understand me because my form looks like their human form. And we have discussed this earlier. Yes, We discussed that human beings have been created in the image of Krishna's form. But the problem is human beings, when they are very bewildered, when they do not know this, they think, oh, this is another human being who has appeared. Param bhavam ajananto, they do not understand my superior or supreme spiritual nature. And that I am Bhuta Maheshwaram. Bhuta means those things which are created, animate and inanimate. I am the supreme lord of everything that exists. Just because I am amongst them, they think I am one of them. I am bewildered. And this can be very dangerous for the spiritual advancement of people in general. Because if people are not recognizing my supreme position and they end up offending me, criticizing me, judging my activities in the wrong way, that is going to be the cause of their detriment. So knowledge is very important, isn't it? Yes. Even in this material world, if we do not know how, what is what properly, we will end up Misusing it, abusing it, or hurting ourselves in the process. Like a small child who doesn't know what a gun is, but has finds a loaded gun in his hand and he clicks it. There was this episode, I think it happened, was it in Australia or somewhere? At a at a shooting range, a child was being shown how to use a gun 
and the trainer wasn't very careful and he gave a loaded gun in the hand of the child trying to explain to it and the child without properly understanding pulled the trigger of the loaded gun as the gun was pointing towards the trainer and killed him instantly so when we deal with something which is very powerful we have to know what it is we don't deal with it properly we end up creating damage so it's very important krishna says to understand his position because if we end up disrespecting we get into trouble and this is not just about us even indra got into trouble even lord brahma himself got into trouble because they did not understand krishna's position properly fully well they also became bewildered what to speak about us indra became bewildered and then you know this whole govardhan leela happened then finally it came falling at the feet of krishna sorry 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 i i now understand you are the big boss because krishna comes into this universe so rarely once in a day of brahma which means indra has never seen krishna until that point in time brahma also he sees him once in a day so that is at least good <laughs> once in his day not our day once in his day but for the devatas because each of the devatas they remain as devatas for 71 yuga cycles so there are 14 times the devatas change in one day of brahma so not even in every manvantara krishna comes personally so in many manvantaras the devas are never even see krishna or krishna leela so in this manvantara it is fortunate that the devatas are getting an opportunity to see and understand krishna's leela so brahma got bewildered uh, sorry uh, indra got bewildered and he thought who is this childish boy who is spoiling my sacrifice you know how beautiful past time happened because of that and brahma ji he also momentarily first he thought he is krishna but then again he got bewildered oh so difficult to understand his activities is he really god even though he sees him once in a day is this really the same person who comes once in my day to manifest this beautiful past times and the same person who i saw at the, as soon as i was created at the beginning of all creation when i chanted the mantra is given to me and i had this darshan of golok vrindavan is he the same boy and all those forgetfulness or misunderstandings led to very embarrassing episodes both for indra and brahma so what to speak of us we have to be so careful so we have to understand that krishna even though he appears and this krishna explains in the fourth chapter he says that even though i come in this world i do not accept a material body is a accept a transcendental body satchidananda vigraha satchidananda rupaya krishnaya the gopala tapani upanishad says tam ekam govindam satchidananda vigraham that is that only one and only govinda who has a spiritual transcendental body full of eternity knowledge and bliss so this is very important to understand otherwise we will become spiritually foolish and end up offending him and what happens when we offend the supreme personality of godhead the next verse describes and that is why krishna is warning us to make sure that we do not fall into this trap of committing the offense of misunderstanding him because ultimately the lord is the one who is the enjoyer beneficiary of all sacrifices he is the one who is going to give all benedictions if you end up offending him 
it's like going and offending the owner and then going to one of the subordinates and saying no you know i don't want you but i'll go to him to get what i want it's very foolish right because that person is just an employee he is the boss you upset the boss and then you go to the employee and say no no i will deal with you i don't want to deal with that person it's not going to work in the bhagavatam there is a very beautiful verse where uh, shaunaka muni the sages gathered in front of sudgo some they describe krishna's leela and how krishna is so difficult to understand it says this is in 1120 kritavan kil karmani saharamena keshavah ati martyani bhagavan dudah kapata manusha that krishna along with balram they played just like a human being and they were so masked as if they are just like a human being but they still perform so many superhuman acts So of course this is a very vast topic. We don't want to go into this, but we have discussed this earlier. Fourth chapter very clearly, the Lord says that my janma karma cha me divyam. Even though I appear to take birth in a in the material world, I'm not actually born. Janma karma cha me divyam evam yovet pitakpata. So there are many many beautiful verses in scripture. This is important. for us to understand and then krishna says the problem of not understanding me and offending me is mogasha moga karmano moga gyana avichetasah rakshasim asurim chaiva prakriti mohinim shritaha those who have taken shelter of this bewildering energy of mind which means a materialistic maya and have failed to understand the transcendental nature of mind and because of that they have become vichetasah vichetasah means bewildered impure polluted intelligence what happens mogasha mogasha means whatever they want to attain material or spiritual all their hopes of attainment are baffled because everything that is given those who are wanting to go to the spiritual world krishna needs to grant it if you are offending krishna how can you go there if you are wanting material benefits moga karmano you are doing various karma activities according to your various prescribed duties but ultimately sansiddhir hari toshanam ultimately you are doing all these activities to please god hari even if you are worshiping the devatas and krishna clarifies this in the next few verses again just like he spoke in the seventh chapter that even what the devatas are giving is not given by the devatas is given by me mayaiva vihitan hitan so if you are doing all your prescribed duties properly and you want to attain let's say the higher planets Want to attain Indra Loka, but you offend me. Not understanding me, Krishna, properly. If you offend me by being vicheta sa, moga karmano, your karmic, fruitive activities, even the performance of your prescribed duties, will not give the desired result. Moga, moga means. Uh, futile mogasha futile hopes moga karmano futile fruitive activities moga gyana vichetasah even if you are cultivating knowledge and you want to attain the impersonal brahman and you want to attain liberation even that you will not be able to achieve even mukti if you deride me you may do all other things perfectly but if you deride me arjun because neither bhukti mukti or siddhi or any form of attainment 
can be achieved without my blessing no matter whom you go to you go to any devata you do any process i am the ultimate grantor i am the ultimate enjoyer of all worship and i am the ultimate grantor of all benediction so please be careful do not be vicheta saha by taking shelter of this delusory material energy of mind understand my param bhavam then krishna immediately contrasts these people who are bewildered who become mogasha moga karmano moga gyana which means they cannot attain the spiritual world they cannot attain the fruit, the results of their good activities in this world nor can they attain liberation na bhukti na mukti na bhagavad dham neither of the three because they offend the lord so don't take shelter of the material energy because that will bewilder you and make you think i am one of this people you must understand my nature from the sadhus why taking shelter of the spiritual energy mahatmanastu maam partha daivim prakriti maashritaha bhajanti ananya manaso yatva bhuta adim avyayam very beautiful words he's telling arjun these people are deluded but there are those mahatmas who are not deluded and who are these mahatmas these mahatmas are those who have taken shelter not of my mahamaya my spiritual maya daivim prakritim ashritaha and how do they take shelter of the divine energy of mind by taking shelter of scriptures and sadhus and the association of great devotees they get perfect knowledge by which they can understand who i am people cannot understand who i am simply by examining me externally because what can people understand with this charma chakshu this eyes made of material elements only by gyan chakshu the eyes of knowledge which are granted by the association and instructions of great souls is it possible to understand me as the supreme source of everything gyatva bhuta adim avyayam that i don't have a material body i have a spiritual body and when they understand me like this these mahatmas what do they do bhajanti ananya manaso they engage in ananya bhakti of me bhajanti ananya manaso very clearly ananya so krishna is very clear here in this chapter they are fully engaged in my devotional service pure devotional service because they properly understand my position such a person is mahatma according to krishna krishna is very particular whom he calls as mahatma sometimes people in this world label so many people as mahatma but a true mahatma is he who is daivim prakritim ashrita he who has taken shelter of the spiritual energy how by taking shelter of the association of devotees wherein they properly learn about spiritual subject matter and how do these mahatmas what is the activities how do we understand that these are mahatmas because if you want to also say that no no i also want to understand i also want to take shelter of this divine association so that i can understand krishna properly so that i don't fall into 9.13 mogasha moga karmano moga gyana vichita sa i want to fall into 9.14 i also want to do daivim prakriti maashrita and you just said that i need to take association of those who are who have taken shelter so what are the symptoms of those who have taken shelter that those who are mahatmas 
Krishna describes very beautifully in verse 9.14. Very beautiful verse. Very famous verse. Satatam kirta yanto maam yatantascha dhridavrataha namasyantyascha maam bhaktya nitya yukta upasate those who are always connected to me in pure devotion, this is what they do. Correct? In the previous verse, in 9.13, Krishna says that they are Mahatmas because bhajanti ananya manaso. With ananya devotion, they are worshipping me. Nitya yukta. So here the word uses another word for the same ananya manaso. Nitya yukta, always connected to me. How do they worship me? Satatam kirtayantoma. Always they are doing three things. Kirtayantoma. They are always glorifying me. Either speaking about me, chanting my holy names, reading scriptures. Yatantascha dhridavrataha. With great determination. They make effort to make advancement in pure bhakti. They make effort to serve me. Dhridavrata, not that sometimes, okay, today, Saturday, today I will do for a change. Correct? So sometimes, you know, one of the days we want to eat rice, one day we want to eat chapati, one day we want to eat pasta, one day we want to eat noodle. So like that one day we will worship Krishna, other days we'll focus on other more important things. That is not their mentality. Yatantascha dhridavrataha with great determination. This is the goal of my life. Namasyantascha maam bhaktya with great devotion. They are offering their respects and obeisances to the Lord, always accepting Him as their worshipable Lord and the goal of their life. Nitya yukta upasate. This is how they are worshipping. Okay, three ways, right? Always chanting my glories, working hard to serve me and advance in spiritual consciousness. Huh? So this Dhridavrata means two things. One is putting an effort to follow that sadhana very strictly. Point number one. And second is trying in various ways to serve me and please me and my devotees. And always taking a humble position. Namasyantyascha maam bhaktya. Namaha. Namaha means not me, you. You are the boss. Not me. <laughs> Namaskar. You are great. I am not great. Namaskar. It's a very, very beautiful verse. Uh, each of these verses, there is so much to discuss. These are very, very important verses. Uh, but if I spend, uh, you know, one class on discussing each, then... Uh, we will slow down our Gita discussion greatly. So please, there are a lot of beautiful points within each of these verses. A uh, lot of information regarding uh, in the purports. So the key point is that we must, uh, Mahatma is he who follows the process of pure devotional service with great determination. Which is chanting, serving, being humble in front of the Lord and His devotees. So even though this process of Ananya Bhakti is so wonderful, even though this is the topmost, unfortunately, Arjuna, like what I told you earlier, there are those who are envious of me, who are unable to appreciate this Ananya Bhakti. Hmm? Krishna explains a bit more about the Ananya Bhakti a little later in the chapter. But before that, immediately Krishna is making a comment that there are others who are unable to come to this point. And why they are unable to come up to this point? Because they are unable to appreciate this. Because of their envy, appreciate this wonderful goal of Ananya Bhakti. Of how beautiful it is. So they don't end up becoming Mahatmas. Instead, they worship me at a lower platform. Rather than worshipping me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the lovable Lord, rather than approaching me as that lovable Lord of their life, they worship me with a lesser understanding. That is also a spiritual understanding, but that is not my complete understanding. 
I already gave you my complete understanding, Arjuna, in the seventh chapter. So these people, others, they broadly fall into three categories. So he explains this in 9.15. Jnana yadnena chapyanye yajanto maam upasate ekatvena pratatvena bahudha vishvato mukham There are others who are trying to cultivate spiritual knowledge but who haven't reached the pinnacle of full understanding of me. Jnanam vidnyana sahitam Like what I mentioned in the 7th chapter. Full knowledge of me. Asheshataha without anything left out. They are still progressing slowly, gradually increasing their knowledge about spiritual understanding. So they develop three different kinds of concepts about me and approach me accordingly or worship me accordingly. And what are those three concepts? Ekatvena. Some people think of me in oneness. Me in oneness means they think that I and the Lord are one. I am God. Right now I am in illusion. But when I become liberated by my sadhana, I will realize that I am only God. Right now I have forgotten. But of course they are unable to explain how that, how that God, first of all, got trapped in illusion and how we became free. When they say that, they say it is play. But this is all not a very logical proposition. But nonetheless, they understand they are spiritual in nature. They know God is spiritual in nature. So they simply put equal to in the middle. I equal to God. But they forget that you are just a drop and God is the ocean. You may be similar in quality, but you are not same in quantity. And you are eternally apart and parcel. But you are never going to be one and merged with God. to Become Him. So this is one class of philosophers. Worship Him ekatvena. These are typically the Brahmavadis. And those who are on the extreme side of Brahmavadi become Mayavadis. They become extremely offensive to the Lord because they even describe Krishna as having a material body, Mayavad. Mayavad means the argument of Maya or material body for the Lord. Krishna has already refuted that philosophy. Krishna already says. Avajananti maam muda manushim tarmashitam param bhava majananti. Now Krishna says that when I come in my original spiritual form, people misunderstand me to be a human being. They think I have a material body. In the fourth chapter also Krishna says, Sambhavami atma mayaya. I come down in this material world not by taking shelter of Mahamaya, but atma maya, my personal spiritual energy. I don't accept a material body. But those who follow the Mayavad philosophy, they say, oh, I and God are equal. Even when God, incarnations of God, that is actually just a temporary manifestation from this eternal Brahman. And that temporary manifestation takes a temporary material body. That is known as the Mayavad philosophy. So that is one level of worshippers, imperfect understanding of God. Then there are others to worship God as Prathaktvena Bahuda in different, different forms. By thinking that these different, different forms are different representations of that same God. So these are typically those people who think that all these various devatas are that same God, but they have simply been given a particular shape because of the liking of a particular group of people. Bahuda, Prathaktvena Bahuda, that duality in diversity. So they worship different, different gods. So this is typically in the Smartha tradition, it's done like this. And there are third category. Is known as Vishwato Mukham. 
those who worship the universal form of the Lord. And we have discussed this a few times that these are those individuals who are not yet sufficiently advanced to understand the spiritual form of the Lord. So they simply come to the material conclusion that the universe is God. There is no God beyond the universe. We have discussed this quite a few times. Krishna is so kind that even those who think like that, he says, okay, at least somewhere he is starting. At least he is not rejecting the idea that there is a God. At least he is beginning at that level. And that's a material concept of God, but still, they are accepting the universe as God. And they worship that. And this, this concept has become very common in the world. So the lowest of this is the conception of he who thinks himself as uh, as God. Higher than that are those who are worshipping the devatas or some imaginary form as God. Some people don't even worship the devatas. They just come up with a idea of their form of God. Just come up with an imaginary form of God. That's also Bahuda, uh, Pratakvena Bahuda. And then there are those who, because they cannot have any other better understanding, they accept the universal form. Now, these people, if they are fortunate to evolve in their spiritual knowledge, then they can come to higher stages. And they can eventually come to the point of appreciating the Supreme Personality of Godhead and then become Ananya devotee. So it is not that these people are hopeless. They are currently at a particular lower level of understanding of the Supreme Truth. But why are they not moving higher? Because they have not yet taken association of Mahatmas, which Krishna described in the previous verse. Because knowledge of God and these, this secret knowledge of God has to be revealed in the association of devotees. And one usually becomes eligible for such association when somehow one has reduced his envy to a point that he is granted the blessing of that association. Somehow through Agyata Sukriti and others, one becomes fortunate enough to get that association. And then one comes into that level of initially, at least theoretically understanding. Ah, Bahunam Janmana Mante Nyanavan Maam Prapadyate Vasudeva Sarvamiti Samahatma Sudur Labaha. We discussed this verse already. After many, many lifetimes of all these various kinds of worships, finally when one comes to proper knowledge, Bahunam, Jarmana, Mante, Jnanvan, when one actually becomes properly situated in knowledge, he understands what? Vasudeva Sarvamiti. Oh, ultimately it's the Supreme Personality of God and Vasudev. Everything is dependent on Him. Everything is coming from Him. Such a great soul and such a person, again Krishna is referring to such a person as Mahatma. He enters the Mahatma League when he understands this. Sir Mahatma, Su Durlabha, which is extremely difficult to find. So just imagine if, if we are able to understand this point. And we are able to engage in the process of pure devotional service with determination. What does it mean? It means we are immediately in the league of Mahatmas. Okay, so Krishna has already given the formula. So any one of you is fond of becoming Mahatma, then this is the formula. Accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and endeavor with great enthusiasm to become a pure devotee. So Krishna explains here clearly, this is the goal, this is Ananya Bhakti, these are the lower understandings. And then after having described this, actually these three types of worship 
Krishna explains in more detail in the Bhagavad Gita. Worship of various devatas as different forms of him. He explains this point. He has explained this a little bit in the seventh chapter. But later in this chapter, he is going to go into more detail. In verses 20 to 25, he is going to be discussing the same topic in greater detail. So just a few verses away. The topic about worshipping in Ekatvena, thinking you to be God. Krishna is not going to waste verses in ninth chapter on that because that is the very low form. Those who worship that, in that way, they think that is the highest. Krishna's opinion is that that is low. So he dedicates that conversation in the 12th chapter because that is where he contrasts that with bhakti. In the 12th chapter. Because in the 12th chapter, Krishna asks Arjuna very, very explicitly this question. Those who worship him, worship you, Krishna, thinking you to be the impersonal Brahman, and those who are your devotees who worship your spiritual form, out of them, who is better? Krishna asks a very, very explicit question. So Krishna goes deeper into that knowledge in the 12th chapter, which is the end of the middle section of the six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita. But here he just refers to in the passing by saying Ekatvena. And then Vishwato Mukam worship in the universal form. Krishna has given some description earlier. He is going to spend the next three, four verses in describing this conception of the universe as God. And then a little bit more will be discussed in the 11th chapter, which is the Vishwarupa Darshana Yoga. So let us see from 16 to 19 verses, the Lord actually spends to describe the conception of this Vishwato Mukham, the Vishwarupa Upasana. So there are three Upasanas. One is Ahangraha Upasana. Ahangraha Upasana means worshipping in a way with the concept that I and God are one. Then there is another method of worship which is Pratikopasana. The upasana of a pratik, which means the concept there is, I imagine a particular form to be God as a representative, and through that form I worship God. It's a very very common misconception nowadays. When you ask some Hindu, oh you are worshiping this murti, what is? No no, this murti is not God. This murti is a is is a is a pratik. It's just a representation to worship the God which is beyond and impersonal. I'm just using this as a mechanism. But the Pratik by itself doesn't have any value or meaning. That is the concept. And the third is Vishwarupa Upasana. So in the Vishwarupa Upasana, there are three verses. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go through the three of them and then we can end. He says... Aham kartrur aham yadnyaha swadham swadaham aham aushadham mantroham aham evajam aham agnir aham hutam. This is a very beautiful verse. Essentially, in this verse, Krishna is describing the various aspects of the yadnya process, the different limbs of the yadnya process, and saying that I am them. He says, I am the ritual of the yajna. I am the yajna itself, the fire itself. I am that offering. I am the aushadi which is offered. I am the mantra which is chanted. I am the ghee. I am the fire and I am the offering. Now, essentially what the Lord is saying is, as a part of the universal form, Within the universal arrangement, within this universal form, Krishna has instituted himself as Yajna. Through the process of Yajna, he is the Lord of Yajna. He is Yajneshwara. But the system of Yajna is created by him. Krishna explains that in the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita. I have set up the system. And through this system, you can achieve both material and spiritual happiness. So he's saying this process is me, this whole yajna system is me. So Krishna is emphasizing here that even if you take up this conception of the universe as me, you must understand that you must live 
according to the yajna system and what is the essence of the yajna system the essence of the yajna system is you must give to the system before you can take from it you cannot simply take you have to give there must be yajna there must be sacrifice and how is sacrifice performed how is sacrifice performed not just by doing a fire yajna but in the broadest sense performance of prescribed duties according to guna and karma is the execution of yajna this also krishna explains in the third chapter so he explains this whole yajna thing and he says this is very important set of rituals of course this is more important for those who are not into ananya bhakti because those who are into ananya bhakti they have already transcended these rituals krishna already explained that in the second chapter jagyasurapi yogasya shabda brahma ativartate so those who are even inquisitive about the transcendental they transcend the materialistic ritualistic processes and then krishna says very beautiful verse this also i have quoted multiple times pitaham masya jagatah mata dhata pitamah vedyam pavitram omkar riksam yajure vacha i am father of the universe the mother of the universe the grandfather also of the universe and i am the maintainer dhata supporter maintainer vedyam i am the object of knowledge i am supreme pure i am the om and i am the vedas the rik sam and the jiva so within the context of the universal form all these concepts must be understood then there is another very beautiful verse this verse i like very much 9.18 yatir bharta prabhu sakshi nivasah sharanam surut prabhav pralaya sthanam nidhanam bijam avyayam this is how you must conceive me in the context of my presence within the universe gatir bharta i am the goal bharta means i am the sustainer the nourisher prabhu i am the lord sakshi i am the supreme witness nivasah i am the abode i am the resting place sharanam i am the refuge i am your dear miss dear most friend surut prabhav pralayah i am the source of creation i am the one into whom everything is destroyed i am the basis the sthanam of everything and i am also the resting place of everything so everything is resting on me without me nothing can exist and i am the inexhaustible seed huh? eternal seed what does that mean even though from him so many things come and so many times it gets destroyed the seed the lord remains as it is without any pk or diminution remember we discussed this also last time om purnam adha purnam idam purnat purnam udachyate purnasya purnam adaya purnam eva avashishyate that even though the complete whole this world comes from the lord the lord remains as the complete whole he doesn't become less he remains as the bijam abhyayam remains as the transcendental lord so this is a very beautiful prayer this is also very wonderful way to conceive and understand the lord and his presence within this manifest universe gatir bharata prabhu sakshi nivasah sharanam srit prabhav pralaya sthanam nidhanam bijam avyayam so i'm we are going to stop here uh, so we have come to a very interesting point where krishna has described these three processes these three uh, sub 
or lower level processes of worshiping the lord and we discuss about vishwato mukam so next time from we will continue from verse 20 where actually krishna goes into the details of prithaktvain how god is worshiped by some people with this mentality that there are different different gods who all represent that same one god and you can pick whoever one you like like ganesh pick ganesh you like hanuman you pick hanuman you like durga you pick durga these are all pratik representation this is their concept krishna doesn't approve of that concept and krishna explains that in the next in the next set of verses which we will discuss in the next class uh, our krishna explains the system or the concept or also krishna explains why it is not the proper understanding but still krishna being kind he says that still those people will still make some advancement because at least there is a concept of a supreme even though the understanding of the supreme and the understanding of my position is not yet clear and that is why that is not still considered bhakti what to speak of shuddha bhakti it is not even properly bhakti but still because there is a concept of supreme in all these three processes whether it is vishwarupa upasana whether it is pratika upasana or whether it is ahangraha upasana because there is some concept of a transcendent supreme there is some spiritual progress nonetheless so in that sense there is some blessing that is received from me but they have to gradually come to a higher level to understand and appreciate my spiritual transcendental form and eventually graduate into ananya bhakti to have a complete understanding and a complete fulfilling relationship with me so we'll continue next week from verse number 20 onwards thank you very much dantraj bhagavad gita ki verse number 19 right bro no we completed up to oh, okay 19 i didn't read okay just read 19 i sorry i forgot because 19 is a part of this section thank you for reminding me just quickly recite 19 as well just give me a second <clears throat> तपा अहम अहम वर्षम विघृणा उत्सृजा च अमृत चैव मृत्यु सद असद चाहम अर्जुन दिस इज अगेन कंटिन्शन ऑफ द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द विश्व उपासना वेर इज इज ओ अर्जुन आई गिव हीट एंड आई ऑल्सो विथोल्ड हीट and i withhold and send forth rain i am immortality i am also death and spirit and matter are both in me again krishna is saying that he is the controller he gives and withholds rain all energy is also coming from him as well as this whole material world which is a combination of spirit and matter is both coming from him so it's a similar idea krishna has expressed in the seventh chapter as well in the beginning of the discussion Okay, yeah thank you amit for reminding me yeah so that brings us to 9.19 so we'll stop here and from 9.20 the pratikopasana will be discussed any questions wonderful okay so thank you all very much uh, and uh, we will meet on uh, saturday where we will continue our discussion on the bhagavatam so tantra shrimad bhagavad gita ki jay shri prabhupada ki